Hi, welcome. I just installed the very last Arch Linux version on a virtual box, so it's going to be maybe a little bit slower. And the topic of the video is going to be all about Office. I'm going to make an article all about Office uh, applications. Now, first off, before we get started, so this is a clean installation, we see something red down here. So, Ctrl Alt T, this is the version, date is this one. So yes, there are updates we should do. And before maybe we do, let's assume you want to learn more and because that's one of the goals of Arc Linux to empower you, to teach you, to learn you so that you become independent and maybe at some point in time say, I'm gonna move to Arch Linux, why not? So the dot config is where everything is, is happening. And if you wanna safeguard it before you do backups and scales and all that, it's always interesting to do a control C, control V. It doesn't take long. And now we have a copy of your own settings in here. And you can always say, let's see and compare between um, one copy and the other copy are the differences. So if you do a scale, you'll see that there will be differences. Okay, so we have already a backup. Now, if you want to know what's changed in ETC scale, because Arch Linux is a bit special, in ETC scale, we have a lot of data in here. And we move this guy over here, not in the trash, please, but in here. So we have a bookmark. This stuff gets updated all the time. And with the command scale, it's gonna copy paste this lot and put it over here, in here. So that's why it's interesting to have a copy paste. So you have a backup. Okay. There is a command that's pretty interesting to know if you want to learn something. First off, there are aliases, a lot of them. And they keep growing because they are a way to make our life easy. And easy is fun. And one of the things is this scale, so you'll find a scale in here as well. And it's gonna copy paste everything from the ETC scale to your root. The other thing that's interesting to learn is uh, of to, to know if you want to learn is the backup scale. Copy paste everything from etc scale to a folder called scale backup with a date. Meaning you can compare and compare and keep comparing what's changing on my machine. So if you do a backup scale, it's a command you can actually type. So these aliases are commands and you get this folder up here. This is what it used to be after a clean install. This is timing, that's the date, hour and all that. That's right after the installation, clean installation. And now, now we're ready to learn and to do ourselves a update. There are two things we need to update. One is the Arch Linux stuff and the Arch Linux stuff. And with this command, both of them are in here. If you go up here, you'll see that there are stuff. These guys have the name, let's go back up. These guys have the name Arco Linux in it, meaning these are specific from us. They will be installed, all the rest, and it's like 90 or 95% is just Arch and a little bit from AUR. And that is the message that we give to you. And it's all here. I just answered somebody on Facebook you really need to read this page so you know what Arch Linux is all about, right? I was asking, is it 64 bits or 32? Everything you need to know is in this page. Page, Is it missing? I will add it, okay? This is the summary what you need to know. Arch Linux is Arch Linux plus AOR plus all the Arco stuff. And in the colors you see all that's red is Arch and a little bit of Arco and a little bit of AUR. That's basically us in a nutshell. So read the article and there is also an invite for Discord. You can come and chat with us on this application called Discord. Quite beautiful. It, uh, it's nice themed. It fits right into the theming of Arch Linux. This thing is the general update, right? Arch Linux and Arch Linux. What's now coming, if you type it afterwards, after the update, is the rest. And the rest is all AUR. You see the word here. But Control C, Control C, Control C, Control C, Control C, Control C. 
one thing we forgot, but I'm just one thing that we may have installed, but I broke it off, I think. Installing Rust. So one of the things at this point in time is after the creation of the update, the developer of Umox has changed his package build, which result in a large amount of packages and I don't want that. So I say forget about that, sudo pacman minus remove Umox. If you don't know what it is, never used it, it's time to remove it, okay? So it was fine before, an update came in and now we need to install Rust and all that. Let's see if I still have Rust. It was successful or not. Yes, it was installed. Take a look at the size already and you're gone again. So nothing happened, nothing serious. Just one package got installed and I've just deleted it again. So if we do, let's do clear a little bit nicer. PKSYUA, Umox deleted first. And then you see there is no Umux anymore. The Hello Icons, Tryzen, Vivaldi. This is for my, um, well, videos, if you wanna see videos in Vivaldi and Sapphire. All this will be quickly installed. This is, takes a little bit longer. And by the way, just for your information, RPM is a extension and it comes from which distro? Right. Red Hat. So anything that's coming from AOR comes from Debian, Red Hat, SUSE, GitHub, StarGZ, Zips. It can come from anything, even from Exes. I've seen things come in from Exe, then extracted. I think it were fonts. So yes, it can be any source. It's not particular Arch Linux or something. It's coming from the net. It's being repacked and compressed again. This is what he's saying here, compressing package. That's what he's doing. Talking about compressing package, Eric, shouldn't you show the guys that you can use more cores? You type in bin slash main. That's it. Enter. That's all you need to do. Type in the password. Done. What you've done now is tell the system, hey system, I have four cores. Stop using just one. Use them all four. And then your compression, all the things we're doing here right now that's moving here, is gonna be faster because you're using not one core, but four. And this is the virtual box, meaning on my real machine, my SSD machine, I have eight. So it installs much faster. Interesting to know, but still not the topic of our video. <laughs> but let's just uh, let's just do that first. So the question on on Facebook was, "Hey Eric, why is there no LibreOffice, OpenOffice? There is no Office. There is something. There is some some small things here, but it's not. Sorry, it's not really an Office package, right? Well, it used to be on the ISO at some point in time." But these installations were never uh, set. As, were ne no, not everybody was happy. First of the choice, why LibreOffice? Why OpenBox? Why WPS? Etc. Etc. There are so many choices. So what choice is good? There is there is not a solution for to please everybody. That's one. Two. Then there was the language. Why is this language not in French? Why is it not in German? Etc. So we say, okay, um, let's just not put any office thing in there because it's so easy to install it yourself. Well, there are several options and I, well, I often don't do. It seems I so, um, well, to, I always lean to the terminal, but there is actually an application in here, software, let's go shopping, that you can use, all right? Productivity maybe, I don't know. Let's have a look. All kinds of stuff. Abbey Word. Looks like something Office, right? Let's see if we can find some stuff. LibreOffice, Math. Elements you can find. One up. 
we can go to more I believe we can see here no 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 just productivity we can here see the word processors that's a little bit less already but still not the ones I want to see so that's top rated by name the ones I'm missing are OpenOffice, don't see that, LibreOffice is there, WPS Office is not there. So this is your first search, generic, numeric thing that's a spreadsheet like, so that's also possible, LibreOffice is there. So that's the first search. Second search is in here, PAMEC. Don't forget we have PAMEC, don't forget he has categories. Okay. Education, Internet, Office. Look at that. Office, Abbey Word, Bookworm, Calibre. It's interesting for PDF and, and to read e I not PDF, uh, ebooks, so EPUB and other extensions which I can't recall. But stuff you put on these small Kindle like uh, uh, tablets to read a book. That's a very useful thing. Used to read a lot, used to use it. Basically, with Arch Linux, I don't have a lot of time to read on that, but I read a lot of, well, uh, literature on informatics and Linux. Mm -hmm. Mailing. So you go through them, you see whatever you like. The only thing you need to do is click and say apply, and it's installed the same with the other application there. LibreOffice is here, the fresh one math so the equations and scientific stuff not particularly neat at on my iso so that's why it's not in here you decide what you need maybe you want a planner or something it's still here it's just one click away install done do we need to have this stuff on our iso don't think so now another thing is google because i'm still not happy what i found best Office Suite Linux. Oh my God, we're in Bing, in, in Bing here. Google.be. Best, best Office Suite, oops, is that correct? Yeah, Linux. LibreOffice, Apache, WF, Only Office, Fangs Office, SoftMaker, Caligra Suite, okay. This guy, what does he say? Is that Ubuntu Pit? Yeah, okay, that's the one from Ubuntu Pit. So this one is the same as that one. So let's go to Slant. What does he say? LibreOffice, only Office, Google Drive, of course. Yeah. Oh my God. See full list. And here you see other names that we can make videos about, that we can test it out. But it's just you who decide what you like it's not me I can just show you that there are lots of other things there is free office there is Google Docs sheets LibreOffice Microsoft Office Online Open365 WPS Office for Linux particularly like this one very close to office as we use it at work or you know everybody probably well lots of people are using Microsoft Office well it's very similar Caligra suits, uh, only office, and of course, ta -da! of course, Apache Open Office. So, honorable mention as well. So, it's up to you to decide what you need to install. And let's make a few videos about these office uh, applications. We can only say that I always go to the terminal, that's one thing, and then yay right and you see what you need to type it's not difficult we say yay LibreOffice for instance as you find that one the most on the ISOs so you won't be unique if you put this on the ISO everybody has it right but this is Afrikaans language right this is Amharic this is Arabic this is Assamese Asturiano I mean you do probably just need one language, right? Not all of these languages. So I'm not going to put all these languages on the ISO. It's up to you to decide, okay, 
best for me is in this language or that language. And then we just need to set it, make sure that it's the proper setting for the language, maybe a dictionary or so, and that's it. That's what we need to do and figure out, but that's for other tutorials. So another one, just for the fun, where is OpenOffice? One of the two big, uh, the two big guys here, Apache OpenOffice is this one, but it seems it has some elements, extensions we have to take a look at, all right? Maybe the last one, the one I'm keen of installing and seeing again, because I'm not an Office user. I'm a developer, I don't need this thing. Let's do just WPS, what is it again? Office with a dash. So number four, Kingsoft Office is an Office productivity suit. Okay, 388 votes. Something else that I can show you maybe. And then we call it a day for this video. You go to AOR Arch Linux. These votes. They're not important, but they are important if you find it important. If you say, I want to know what's good and what's bad, and you never know, never used uh, Arch Linux, then you see when I type the keyword office, WP Office 388 people actually put in the trouble to vote for it. These guys say, yep, it's good. So this might give you an idea to say, maybe I should check out only Office bin as well. And so on and so on. You just move down. Here is open Office and so on. Maybe another idea to get to know all the possible solutions and packages on your Arch Linux slash Arch Linux. Okay. So this is a video has been, well, first about updating. Is that done? I believe so. So we can make a copy. That's done. This guy is up to date by um, out of date. By the way, I've made a video. This is the time now, if you see this, video at the moment it was uploaded you'll see that there is a uh, possibility to learn about how to package build at this point in time very neat tip in there but okay when you probably see it a few weeks later later it's not gonna be uh, well it's useful still but it will not work since the update will be in by then um i thought i was thinking something else so we've looked at the internet there are probably other sources as well but as you can see there are lots of choices already uh, to to install and to figure out and to check out because it's not just the application you need to install most of the questions come afterwards hey i want to change the, the language or can we have a dictionary or can we have etc uh, etc et so we have this is also very interesting website techmint.com can I make a little bit, um, well, say that this guy, guys, because it's a lot of um, um, authors that write here, is an interesting uh, website to check out and see if there's anything you'd like in here. So again, the same names, of course, we can't change, but there's page one of four, so we need to keep going. Gnome Office, Abbey Word, this is all the stuff. Well, you can call this GNOME Office, but okay, you see what it is. Inkscape is not really GNOME Office. Softmaker Office, Oxygen Office. I hope these looks have been I have been updated because it seems that they're from Windows 95. Look, Google Docs, Zoho Docs. So some stuff that's online as well. But it's up to you and it's up to us to decide, okay, I'm gonna work with this or that tool. Because often we have already docx stuff or pptx stuff and it needs to be able to, to read it and load it and not change it when you navigate back to Word or, or PowerPoint or Microsoft and so on. If that's the case, you really need to do it. Well, you have to search for the proper uh, tool. All right, so that's our intro. We're gonna do this. And 
you can do this without me. You've seen all the tools we have available to figure out what is now the best office suit for me.